I'm joined now by Congressman Brad Sherman, Democrat from California, who was at the DNC headquarters last night and says he had to be evacuated in the midst of the protest. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. We're glad you're okay. Good to be with you. So can you take us inside the DNC headquarters last night as protesters gathered outside? Describe what you experienced. What did you see? What did you hear? We uh, had about a dozen members of Congress there with maybe two dozen candidates from all over the country. And uh, these are the people we need to elect in order for Democrats to be in control of the House. Uh, uh, soon to be Speaker Jeffries was there uh, along with our other leadership. Uh, but it was after they had left that uh, the Capitol Police came in and said, we're on lockdown. You're not allowed to leave. Keep in mind, these are the kind of events people go to. They show up for a while. They leave constantly. People come in and out. We were locked in. And then maybe a quarter hour after that, they came in and said, we are evacuating you. Members all come to this end of the room. And uh, they sent uh, 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 they, they sent us down to the basement and uh, to the garage, uh, put us in the SUVs with heavily armed uh, Capitol Police. And I want to say... I am very proud of the Capitol Police. That is the organization that saved our democracy on January 6th. Uh, we were able to certify the Electoral College votes because Capitol Police officers put their lives on the line. And uh, I have tremendous respect for the Capitol Police. And when they uh, say that uh, they were brutalized, that six of them were injured, that they were punched and pummeled and uh, uh, and, uh, and and uh, pepper spray, uh, that gives me great concern. Mm. Well, of course, as we just reported, one of your colleagues said that the evening reminded them of January 6th. You're making that connection now. Did it remind you of January 6th? And were you scared, Congressman? I wasn't scared, but it takes a lot to raise my blood pressure. It didn't remind me of January 6th, except in the extent of the, uh, uh, the heroism, uh, the dedication of the Capitol Police. Uh, these are not folks uh, that should be punched and pepper sprayed. These are people who should be honored for what they did for our country on January 6th and what they do to protect democracy every day. You have said in a previous interview of some of the pro-Palestinian protesters that they are being duped. Can you explain what you mean by that? Who's behind the deception? Who are they being duped by? Well, look, we all see these scenes and we want the violence to stop. And so they're told, let's yell for a ceasefire, but an unconditional ceasefire. What they don't realize is that is exactly what Hamas has, very frankly, admitted is their strategy. Their strategy is to rampage, retreat, regroup, and repeat. And a senior Hamas official declared he wants to, that they are going to repeat October 7th a second, third, fourth, fifth time until Israel is wiped out. So the people want an end to violence. And the way to get that is to demand a conditional ceasefire, a ceasefire with the release of all the hostages and with the disarming of Hamas. Otherwise, you're simply playing in, being duped into the rampage, retreat, regroup, and uh, repeat uh, 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 efforts of Hamas. And that is effectively what Israel is saying, that they would consider that once the hostages are released. I want to get your reaction. Congresswoman Becca Ballant has come forward, the first Jewish member of the House to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. What was your reaction to hearing that? I frankly uh, hadn't heard it, and we all want a ceasefire. I call for a ceasefire, but a ceasefire that includes the release of the hostages and the disarming of Hamas. There isn't anybody, uh, very, very few people in the world that don't want to see an end to the violence in Gaza. As you know, President Biden has been getting some pressure from Palestinian groups across the country, some members of the Democratic Party who want him to be more forceful in terms of calling for an end to the violence. How do you assess how President Biden has responded to the Israel-Hamas war. And are you concerned about him losing support? Well, I'm very proud of President Biden. We face two major international conflicts. He's handling them very well. And he's showing his decades of experience in foreign policy. Uh, and I, as I said, I think 
everyone in the world wants to see an immediate end to the violence. And I think uh, President Biden uh, understands that you're just going to have a regroup repeat unless Hamas is disarmed. That's what Israel's doing, but they're doing it. Uh, they're providing food. When In our wars, we never provided food mm -hmm. to our enemy populations. Uh, they are, uh, in, in all of our wars, we bombed the fuel and the fuel depots of our opponents. And we, of course, always advise, uh, uh, follow the rule of law. In a few cases, individual servicemen didn't, and they were punished. But uh, we, we, we are seeing Israel lose lives of its own soldiers because they are going in on the ground rather than just using their superior air force. They're using the air force too, yeah. but they could be more with the air force and less, and less casualties on the ground if they weren't concerned about Palestinian lives. Congressman, I just want to zoom out for a moment and ask you a question about politics, if I could. You have seen some of the recent polls, I'm sure, including some which show President Biden trailing former President Trump in key battleground states. Your colleague, Dean Phillips, recently announced he's running for president. I wonder, have you spoken to Dean Phillips? And how concerned are you that his run could weaken President Biden as he heads into the general election? It certainly isn't helpful, and Dean knows where I stand on this. Uh, Biden is going to be our nominee. I think he's going to be reelected, but I don't think it's going to be easy. And uh, uh, having a Democrat out there saying that uh, Biden isn't worthy of reelection or won't do a good job in his second term just plays into Trump's strategy. And just very quickly, have you conveyed that to him directly? You've spoken to Dean Phillips directly and told him that? Yes. Okay. Congressman Brad Sherman, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.